we are coming to another juncture where we are introducing something else. Amen. Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful sound to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Make a joyful noise, somebody. Make a joyful noise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We, we are having praise now. Let's make a joyful noise as we remember and reflect on the word of God. But let's be part and parcel of the praise. Amen. Over to you. He to bala gutanda za sila lo sila do i to bala gutanda za to bala gutanda za sila lo Do me
Let us give a shout in the clap offering to the Lord, the Most High. He is worthy this morning. He is worthy of our worship. He is worthy of our worship. He is worthy to be lifted on high. He is worthy to be exalted far above our imagination, far above what we can think or imagine. He is God. And he's reigning, he is reigning in heaven above and on earth. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, music team. 
for such a wonderful praise. You can go and take our seats. You can take your seats. It's not easy uh, to disengage. Amen. Amen. We feel like continuing. But anyway, we thank God that we will have this opportunity again to worship him, to love him, to tell of his greatness. Uh, I want to greet you all in the precious name of our Savior and King. I want to recognize uh, our lead pastor, uh, Pastor Morgan and Pastor, Morgan. Pastor Gloria, Matema. Gloria Matema. I want to also thank uh, the Merits Ministry for giving us this opportunity to share. I would want to thank uh, our father and, and mother, mother uh, Apostle Ken and uh, Prophetess Bula, the Prophetess Bula, for giving us this opportunity to minister. If it wasn't for them, who were obedient to the call of God, and to grasp this vision. The vision of Victory Fellowship. Maybe some of us wouldn't be here. We thank them for being obedient. And for raising up such kids as us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I would also want to greet uh, those that are online. We love you and God loves you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, today um, we are sharing on worship. Praise and worship. <clears throat> the theme of my message or the title of my, my message is a show go saying concerning the Father seeks such as these. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is seeking such as these to do what? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We shall take our scripture reading from John 4. From verse 19 to 24. And then while least you are there, then we'll uh, read Acts 17 from, from verse 16. Um, six, we'll read 16, 17, and uh, 20, 24, 25, and 27. You can go for us. John 4, from verse 19 to 24. Let us read. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do... No, it's just... Yeah. <laughs> verse 19, sorry. I was reading John chapter 5 instead of John chapter 4. From verse 19 to verse 20. Oh. From verse 19 to verse 24. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto them, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye not what we know, what we worship, Ye worship ye not what, we know what we worship, for salvation is for the Jews. For the hour cometh and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him 
must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Uh, the hour com is coming where you will not worship here in this mountain nor in Jerusalem. It is not about the place. It will not be in, in the mountain. It will not be in Jerusalem. And also you worship what you do not know. Tell the next to you, someone next to you and ask them, do you know what you worship? But the hour is coming and now is when true, genuine worshippers of God will worship him or they worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship. Then we we'll read Acts 17. Sizabala in 7, Satuka 17. Right, Acts 17, verse 16, 17, and 20. Now, now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was steered in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them and they that met him. Verse 19. And they took him and brought him to the Aeropoca, saying, May we know what this new doctrine, therefore thou speakest, is. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all the Athenians, strangers were given, which were they were spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of mass, he and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with the inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him, declare unto you. God made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth, all, he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Verse 27, they, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he, not, he be not far from every one of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From the reading, we can see Paul was in Athens. And while he was still waiting there, he, his spirit was really troubled because he saw that these men or this city they, were, they had idols, they had various things, and they had this uh, inscription which was written to the unknown God. And then because he was dead inside him. Oh, okay. He rose up to say, now I declare or I proclaim to you this unknown God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then he went on to tell them about God, that he is the creator of the heavens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From uh, John 4, 
we can see Jesus Christ speaking to the Samaritan woman. And he says, you worship what you do not know. Then in, in, in the book of Acts, we see Paul also saying, you are worshiping what you do not know. And this is also our question today. Are we worshiping what we know? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From all the presentations that we had about worship, we have heard sermons. We have heard teachings on praise and worship. And the, de the definition of this Worship, it is the highest form of praise. This is how we show or regard honor or respect, adore or esteem. And, and, and devotion to the divine being. And who is this divine being? We extol this person. We, 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 we praise him or we worship his character. For, we worship him for his character. We worship him for his attributes. We worship him for who he is. Not what he has done. But for who he is. Worship is an awareness. An inward awareness which is outwardly expressed and appreciating this divine being. We, we first see uh, worship in, in the book of Genesis 22. From verse 1 and 5, where God is, is commanding Abraham to take his only begotten son, his only precious son, and take him to a place that he was going to show him to go and offer him as a sacrifice. In, in verse 5, uh, Abraham says to the Lord that he was going with, you shall remain here with the donkey while we go yonder. So that we can worship our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said worship is a it is the deepest form of praise. Abraham and Isaac needed to go yonder. They needed to go deeper. The Lord seeks people that will go deeper in worship. Who will move from wherever you are. Where everyone is watching you. So he has called us. Each one of us here. We have been called. To be a priest to the Lord. Priests are those people that have been, uh, that draw close to God. People that draw near to God. To render service to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what is praise? It is to speak well. 
It is to congratulate. It is to con compliment. It is an act of expression of approval of thanksgiving for the favors for the good things that the Lord has done for me that the Lord has done for you, that the Lord has done for the nation, that the Lord has done for our families, that which he has done for the whole world. Hallelujah. Because he is a good God. But we need to know him. We need to know who he is so that we can then express our love, express our gratitude. Hallelujah. Do you know who you are worshipping? In Athens, they had so many idols that they were worshipping. They were worshipping without understanding. And they had this inscription in their temple that was written to the unknown God. Is God unknown to you today? Is God unknown to you today? Yeah. Hence, you need to know him so that then you can worship him, that you can appraise him, knowing that he, he is God and he has loved you and has redeemed you. Even as the word of God says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I am redeemed and I am redeemed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You need to know what he has done. You need to know who he is. He is a good God. The creator of all things. From the beginning of the foundations of the world. Uh, before the devil uh, rebelled against God. Everything was good. But when he became proud and he began to say, I will ascend and be like the most high, he wanted to be worshipped. He wanted people to worship him. And hence all the angels that rebelled against God were then cast to the earth together with Lucifer. Lucifer. So from that time up to now the devil also seeks worship. Hence the Bible says in the book of, uh, of Exodus 20 from verse 3, 4, and 5 that you should not have any other God before me and besides me, do not make any images of the things in heaven, of the things on earth, or underneath, to bow down to them, because I am a jealousy God. Hallelujah. So in the book of Acts, we see people they had made and they were worshipping this. They also had this inscription to the unknown God. And Paul was stayed inside. His spirit was really And he rises up to proclaim who God is, that he is incomparable. That he is the creator. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Hence, you should worship him and not all other gods that you worship and not all other idols. In, in, the, in the book of First Chronicles, 16. We can see that the idols, they are works of men. 
And there is nothing in their hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They cannot be moved. I'm also reminded of Elijah in Mount Carmel. When he says to the prophets of Baal, call to your Baal. Call to your God. Maybe he is asleep. Wake him up so that he can come and show himself to you and answer you. But because Baal was an idol, there was nothing in his heart. He could not do anything. But this God we say is a God who is mighty. He's a God who is worthy to be exalted. He is not like those that are dead. We do not worship a God who is dead. We worship a God who is alive. And we give him honor. We ascribe greatness to him. For he is worthy. He is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to know our God. So that we will not worship uh, the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that our worship will be directed to our maker. Our God is the omnipresent one. He is not limited to place nor time. He is not limited to Jerusalem. He is not limited to the mountain where the, where the Samaritan woman thought he was uh, the, the Lord was supposed to be worshipped there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he is everywhere. And he can be worshipped. God, Paul says God does not live in man-made temples. But in me. Hallelujah. So we can worship him. Not in the mountain. But we can worship him anyway. Because he is always there. Psalm 139 verse 7. Where can I go from you, O Lord? Where can I flee from your presence? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then in Matthew 28, verse 20, he says, uh, part B, I, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This shows that our God is always there. You cannot hide from him. Even if you go to the deep, if you go wherever, God, God is there. Yes, we need to worship him. He is the all-knowing God who knows everything, who understands, who is unlimited. And he sees, he sees everyone. And he sees everything. He knows your thoughts. He knows your intents. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Exodus 3, verse 7. Exodus 3, Because he is a God who sees. He says, I have seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. The pain that they have gone through. Because of the taskmasters. And I, I have seen their cry. Cancer will come down. Because their cry had gone up to the heavens. When we worship God, our cries go to heaven. And God will come. In John 14, verse 21, Jesus says, Because you obey my commandments, you love me. And uh, because you love me, my father loves you. And then I will come and manifest myself to you on your behalf. This is the God that we worship who will come and manifest himself to us. Hallelujah. 
He is the omnipotent one, yeah, the all-powerful one. Yeah, Power belongs to him. Power does not belong to anyone else, Amanda, so but it belongs to God. We serve a powerful God. We worship a powerful God. Hallelujah. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man to lie, nor a son of man to repent. Has he said, and will not do, or has he spoken, and he will not make it good. So our God will not just make promises to you and not do them. When you come and worship him, know that our God is a true man. He is a God who can answer, who can grant you the desires of your heart. And when you worship you in genuineness, in honesty, then he will grant you the desires of your heart. Our God is eternal. He will not pass away. He will always be there. Hallelujah. So he remains. All men will pass away. But our God remains. Because he was there. When the earth was not there. He is the one who created everything. He, that's why. We are supposed to worship him. We are supposed to worship him. We will praise him. We will praise him in the morning. Because he is eternal. We praise him in the afternoon. We will worship you. Oh God, all the days of our lives. Because you are eternal. He is unchanging. He does not change. He's not like us who change. Who change our goalposts. When we feel we are so happy. Then I behave. Like those that are happy. He is not a chameleon. He doesn't change. Hallelujah. When the chameleon arrives when it is blue, it becomes blue. But our God does not change. Even when there is drought, <laughs> he does not change. He remains the same. Hallelujah. This is the God that we need to worship. Who is unchanging. Hallelujah. Jesus the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. His character does not change. The plans can change. For example, if a sinner comes and repents, he says, I will judge sin. But when you repent, he is full of mercy. He is full of mercy. And he forgives the sinner. That's the only time. Hallelujah. But his character does not change. Our God is holy. Last week we heard about the holiness of God. Without it, we cannot see God. Without it, we cannot be saved. Our God is holy. So hence when we come and worship him, we have to be holy before him. Hallelujah. When we look at the tabernacle of Moses, when the priests were going in to offer worship, to meet with God, they needed to be clean. They needed to be holy. So when we approach our God, we approach him as the holy God. And he expects us to be holy. He expects us to be pure so that we can worship him in all purity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Without this purity, we cannot see God. Those that entered the tabernacle went into the Holy of Holies with sin. They would die. The ringing golden bells, <laughs> the ringing golden bells, 
They had pearls around their robes. And they had to tie a string to the priest as he went in. So they would hear these golden bells while the priest is moving around. And when they hear any silence, they would know he had been slain. But our God is loving. When we confess our sins, we can enter in into the Holy of Holies by the blood because he has cleansed us, he has purified us and made us holy. Hence, we need to continue to live lives that are pure. Our God is righteous our God is just. Our God is love. Uh, I had said to my husband, I will not, maybe or maybe not, I will not talk about this. Worship is a love story. I remember in, 1996, when I was working at Ingujen Hospital, uh, we were still boyfriend and girlfriend uh, with my husband. He would come from Wange. Oh, he would tell me that he will be coming. And I will be at work. I used to have uh, late shifts. Where I start work at uh, 12. And finish at uh, uh, 8 p.m. Because we were in a love relationship, when he was here in Bulawayo, he would come. He didn't have anything. He didn't have a car. He had no money. I had no money. But we had this thing between us. Love. So he would come to collect me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> it will be very dark. But because of the love, <laughs> he had to sacrifice to walk to Ingujen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To come and collect me. And I will be happily awaiting. Loveness, who are you going with today? Hey. Oh, today I am going with my. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> because of the love. And we would walk from there. From Ingujeni to Blue Ribbon, where we were supposed to put. A, 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 a pass there. And we would wait and wait until the, uh, the bus comes. And then we will put together. Regardless of the situation, of what you have, what you had, whether it's cold, whether it's hot, you had to sacrifice because you want to be with your lover. And then we'll put together. I used to live in Sizinda. In, in, in it's just a, 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 a drop off there and then go, go to my home. Just, <laughs> just by the by the bus stop there. But we'll drop together. <laughs> and I would go and change. <laughs> From my uniform. <laughs> and also escort him. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You would be going to get her, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll walk and walk. Then uh, when I, when we were at the filling station, Chabalala, filling station there, then we'll say, <laughs> let me take you back. <laughs> That's the love relationship. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the love relationship. <laughs> it's very difficult to separate. That's how God loves us. I'm, I'm also reminded of Enoch. Hallelujah. How Enoch walked with God. It was the love relationship that they had. And they kept on walking day after day. He, the Lord will come. And, and Enoch will be waiting happily. Like what I used to do when I was waiting for Tinos. <laughs> they will walk and come back. They will walk and come back. There was worship involved because they were communicating. They were talking until finally he was not. That's the love relationship. Hallelujah. God is love. And he is the source of love. John 16 verse 27. The father loves you because you love me. And you have believed that I come from God. Hallelujah. So hence, he loves us. Because we have believed in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We also worship God who is merciful. Who is kind. Who is kind. And faithful. The one that we can lean on. The one who is reliable. You know something that is reliable. He cannot fail you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can keep on leaning. You are depending on his balance. You are depending on his strength. That's the God that we have to worship. He is full of mercy. Lamentations 3 verse 23. 22-23. 22-23. Is Lilo 22, 23. Though the, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassion never fails. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We also worship God because of his name. There are so many names of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have El Elyon. The high and exalted one. Elohim. Elohim. Our God, the pro our providence. The supreme ruler. The God of all creation. We have Jehovah Jireh. This is the manifestation of God to his people. The God, our provider in Genesis, Genesis 22, verse 14, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shama, the Alpha and Omega, our Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So how are we supposed to worship? We worship God audibly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We say it, it is from the inside out. We express it from the inside to outside. We, we express it verbally. We can shout to God in Psalms 47. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. Shabak and shout. With a loud voice. Psalms 26 verse 7. 
that I may proclaim with my voice the voice of thanksgiving and tell of your wonderful works because he's God. We can express ourselves emotionally. We can express ourselves spiritually and we get this release this release cannot be suppressed. You cannot stop it. It has to bubble out. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. And forget not his benefits. Because he is God. And holy is his name. We also have physical expressions of God. Of how to worship God. While we stand. Amen. Behold, bless the Lord. All ye servants of the Lord who stand by night in the house of the Lord, stand up and praise him. Hallelujah. We can also lift our holy hands. We can yander before God. Extend our hands. Confess and thank him. Psalms 134 verse 2 Lifting up your hands in his sanctuary and bless the Lord. We can also clap our hands before God. Psalms 47 verse 1 Clap your hands all ye people. Shout aloud with the voice of triumph. We can also dance before God. A lifting up of feet hallelujah <laughs> Banga poko ko ba kie lu jesu Banga poko ko ba kie lu jesu Hallelujah kulungi le La boba ba Hallelujah and the father Everyone it's not limited to age There is no age limit We can dance we can lift our feet. We can dance. We saw the, 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 the choreographers that were dancing. They practiced. But we can also dance without any style and dance before God. We are doing it for our maker. Hallelujah. We will be worshiping our God. We will be praising our God. I can imagine how how David danced. Yeah. Ah. He danced until the wife complained. <laughs> Even the robes that he was putting on, he did not mind them. He did not mind the wig. Huh? He did not mind the suit. When you are dancing before the Lord, you are doing it for your maker. It's not about your makeup. It's not about your suit. It's not about your shoe. It's not about anything. Because you are in the presence of the living God. You are in the presence of the most high God. Whether I, whether I know or I don't, I will dance before my maker. Because this is the worship. I always say to my children, when I dance, I have no other place. 
I don't go to the discos. I dance in the presence of the Lord. Whether you like my style or you don't, but it comes from the heart. And this is before God. So I will do it. I will I will run. I will dance. I will do everything. Because this is the Lord, my man. I know who I am dancing for. Hallelujah. It has to be spontaneous. We express our joy. Yeah. Our celebration. To our God for the deliverance, for setting us free, for blessing me. I am full of joy. Hence, I will do it before my Maker, before my lover. Amen. Amen. We will sing before God. <laughs> Singing psalms and hymns. These songs that we all know. And also go there. We go deeper to spiritual songs, the songs that no one else can interpret or can know, but only God singing the Spirit, singing before the Lord. Shamandayaka, Muriyandere Baba, Shabiyandaya Yaya, Yorabakata, Sibaranda, Shikiriya Mamondo. He can also give us words that we can sing before him. It's not something that you have rehearsed, but it comes spontaneously, and you begin to express it. You begin to speak it, because you are doing it before your maker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can also sing with musical instruments. We zama before him. Zama. Zama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Playing stringed instruments. You know, God blessed me. And I thank him. I can play the tambourine. In rhythm with the dancing. I can also sing. I can play the drum. That's God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You should be wise if you don't do those things for God. They'll be taken and given to some of us. Some, some of those talents will be taken and given to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The playing of music or musical instruments that I'm talking about has to take another turn. It has to take another level. It's beyond talent. It is beyond talent. It is beyond talent. In fully singing. In fully playing. Hallelujah. Huh? Skillful playing. When David was playing the harp, he played it so skillful that even King Saul, who was possessed with this evil spirit, the spirit had to depart. The devil had to depart. When we play the musical instruments, when we worship skillfully, demons have to flee. They have no place in the tabernacle. They have no place in the sanctuary of God because we are doing it under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Things will begin to shift. Things begin to change. Hallelujah. When even the Levites, during the dedication of the temple, when they played skillfully, the glory of God came down and filled the temple because there was skill. It was beyond talent. It was beyond human 
uh, 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 recognition. It was beyond human imagination. It was all for God. It was all done for the maker. It, it was done for God. Yes, it was done skillfully. The father seeks such as these that will play musical instruments with the, with spirit, with the spirit. They will do it skillfully because it is for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can also weep before God. As, a, as praising God. We can also sit in silence. We can also march. I was listening when people were answering the questions that were given to us. The Jericho march. At times, we will be seeing people marching. And you wonder why they are marching. They are worshiping God. They are doing a Jericho march. Walls are falling. Walls of pride. Walls of sin are falling. As people worship God by marching. When, when the tribe of Judah was faced with the enemy, and, and King Jehoshaphat said, you are going in front and you will praise the Lord. You will praise the, go the Lord. And the army was following. I guess they were not just walking haphazardly. They were marching and you will hear them. Their feet coming. They are moving forward. They are marching. They are taking territories for the Lord. They are winning victories for the Lord. When we march, when the spirit says march, shout of God, march, because there's something that is happening. Walls are coming down. Walls are falling down. Things are changing. You are taking territories for the living God. You are taking territories for the Lord Most High because that's the reason why we were created so that we make the Lord known to the nations, to the whole world. Much child of God. Much child of God. Move forward, child of God. Hallelujah. We can also worship God by rejoicing. In, in the book of Deuteronomy 12, verse 12, it says, after he has spoken that God is going to, uh, he is going to have a place where he's, where he's identifying a place where you are going to bring your offerings. Then he goes on to say, you shall rejoice. You, you, your children, your, 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 female, your female servants, and your male servants and your children will rejoice before God for what he has done because he is the Lord God your maker and he has done things he has done great things hence we will rejoice we will babble and this rejoicing will come out from inside and outside they will see us rejoicing because God, God is good. You can also laugh. You can fall prostrate before God. You can kneel in adoration. What can hinder worship? Sin, sin can hinder worship. If I regard any iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You'll be shy to face your maker. So we need to approach him with a pure conscience. We need to have clean hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can ascend to the heavens. We can ascend to this mountain. Only he who has clean hands we need to be clean in order to offer worship, to minister to others also. We need to have a pure heart. James 3, verse 9 to 10. Our mouth should not uh, uh, utter 
Blessings and curses. We should choose to bless because we are supposed to bless. We need to have a right motive when we come to worship. We should not be double-minded. Because if, a, if you are a double-minded person, you are like the, a, 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 a ship that is being tossed to and from. And such a person should not expect any anything from God because you are double-minded. We need to come with humble hearts, hearts that are broken. God says he will not disregard a contrite spirit. A humble heart like that of David in Psalm 51 verse 17. A heart that has been disciplined by God a heart that has been touched by God. A heart that yields to the Spirit of God. A heart that is repentant. Condemnation can also limit or inhibit our, our worship. You don't believe that God has forgiven you. The Bible tells us that there is, there is therefore, no condemnation for those who, those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. We should be God conscious and not self conscious. Also, worldliness can uh, hinder our worship. So we need to come out of the world and be his chosen people and continue to walk there. Pride can also hinder us. God wants us to be humble. James 4 verse 10. The lack of knowledge of God can also be a hindrance. Being too religious Paul says, I, I realize you men of Athens that you are religious. Let not our religion in, hinder us from worshiping God. Let not our programs, the rush of time, that we fail to worship our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The benefits of worship. Uh, worship pleases God. Because God is pleased. He comes and manifests himself. To us. He reveals himself to us. John 14, verse 21. He comes to bless us. He comes to meet us at our point of need. He, he brings deliverance. Psalms 149, verse 8. It reads, bind the king with chains and nobles with fetters of iron. God comes down as we worship. And he begins to bind the kings, those that think they, they are wise, those that think they have put you in prison, these chains fall away from you. And they are changed by God. And you are set free. I, I, I am reminded of Paul and Silas when they were in this prison and they began to offer praise and worship to God. The, the earth shook. Chains fell off. Doors opened. 
and they were set free. Hallelujah. And it's not only them because of their worship. Even the jailer. The jailer was set free. This jailer and his uh, family. They came to to the same knowledge of Christ because of the worship of Paul and Silas. Because of my worship. Because of your worship. As we together worship, that people should come to the saving knowledge of Christ. People should be set free. People should be delivered. Chains should be broken. And people become free. They receive the blessings of God. It also, worship brings spiritual awakening to me and you and the nations. And we open up to the kingdom of God. The world is redeemed as we worship. Things change as we worship God, as we praise the worthy one. Uh, worship triggers the, 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 the people, uh, which is triggered by God's people. Brings the government of God here on earth. Hallelujah. It brings justice to earth. Psalm 67 verse 2. The way of the Lord is known. And God is worshipped. As we worship, God blends us together. He brings us together. He brings that unity. We we, we, we then offer a harmonious harmonious worship to him. It becomes a sweet server before him, which is acceptable. As we worship together, we become one. We are bound together with God that cannot be broken as we worship the Lord God our maker. Hallelujah. Lastly, I will read First Chronicles 16. I will read from verse 27. It says, honor and majesty are in his presence. Strength and joy are found in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. And in holy array, tremble and reverently fear before him. All the earth's people, the world also shall be established, so it cannot be moved. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice, and let men say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the, the people of God say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Our, our God reigns. And he is worthy to be worshipped. So we we'll rise up to our feet and begin to worship the God that we know. Because God seeks such as these to worship him. Hallelujah. Amen. The Father seeks such as these, they that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. We're going to take time just to offer worship unto God. The Bible says, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. We're going to put into practice, not practice as it were, but we are going to worship him with everything that is within us. Amen. We're going to take praise as the highest form of worship and render it unto God. Shall we worship? Amen. Worship you, Lord. 
surrender it to God. Whoever is not feeling well, surrender to God. Whatever situation, today God is about your expectations. He wants to answer your expectations because this is a family Sunday. This is unique. Oh, worship him. Worship him now. Pour out your heart to him for we know whom we worship. We know how great our God is. Worship Him in your ways. Oh, Shalabakasele. Sing Him a new song. Sing Him in a new song. Sing Him a new song. Forget about the time. Forget about the person next to you. Forget about the situation you left at home. God is here today. God is here for us. He's here for you. Go out your heart unto him. Go out your heart unto him. Go out your heart unto him. only his name. It is only his name. What we only need is God. We can look for things, but what we need is God. Remember, even in his word, he says all these other things, they will be added unto you. 
Let's not seek things that will just be added when we seek God. Let's seek God. Seek God in the spirit. Seek God in truth. Seek God with everything that we do. Seek God in worship. Seek God in praise. Seek God in prayer. Seek God for your family. For what we need is God. And we are in his presence today. Just open your heart unto him. Open your heart unto him. It is him. Only him. It is him and only him. Oh, Shirabaka Sedele Osia Nalababa. Reketete Terebo Sinele Bokasana Labaya. Rimelele Lebo Catalaba Sinele Bokataya. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shelebo Cosinele Bokamaya Nalabaya. You are victorious above that situation. For God is greater than every situation. For God is greater than every situation. Our happiness is in Jesus. Our joy is in Him. And let Him fight our bills. Continue with that song we're singing. That's a song of declaration. I gave all my pencil matches. I gave all my pencil matches. There is no situation that can be above Jesus. verse 19 Isaiah 43 verse 19 Behold I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall you not know it I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert the beast of the field shall honor me the dragons and the owls because I will give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people my chosen these people have I formed for myself that I shall show forth my praise but thou hast not called upon me O Jacob thou hast been weary of me or Israel. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. And shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field shall honor me. 
the dragons of the, and, and owls because I will give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. These people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. They call you Adonai. They call you Yahweh. Some call you Yeshua. You are a mighty God. You are the I am, that I am. My God, you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are Jehovah Rohi. You are our shepherd. You are El Shaddai. You are the all-sufficient God. You have no rival. You have no equal. You are God all by yourself. You are sovereign. My God. My God. You are the one who parted the Red Sea. The God who makes a way where there's no way. My God, who's there like you? Who's there like you? Oh, we worship you. For you deserve all the worship. Oh, you are beautiful beyond description. You are our beloved. You are our lover. And we worship you in the splendor of your holiness. Oh, you are holy. We call you worthy. You are mighty. We glorify your name. You are mighty to those that are not well. We call you Jehovah Rapha. Oh, you are Jaira, our provider. The ancient of days. Oh, the ancient of days. When Oba Kona Mtabungabi Koda, Siago Babaza, Siago Tumisa, Umu Sebaba, Sega Ziwesulu, Ah, Abe Kofana Nawe, Yukosi Sitium Umo Fanelwe, Moba Ufanelwe Baba. Oh, city bayete, bayete, ungu bayete, bachas wanam sanje a victory. The God who surrounds us like the mountains surround Jerusalem. You surround Zimbabwe. You surround Victory Fellowship. Oh God, the one who is like a mighty warrior around us we worship you we salute you you are worthy no one can stand against you we honor you and we glorify your name Jesus you have no rivals you have no
that we have been given as our inheritance. A name that we have been given as our inheritance. That beautiful name. It is our inheritance. It is our inheritance. And the same Jesus says to us today, He shall do a new thing. Behold a new thing in your family. Behold a new thing in your life. A new thing. And when he promises, it is yes and amen. In the same attitude of worship, if you are here and you have never given your life to Jesus, if you are wondering what is happening, or you have heard about this Jesus, but you have not come to the decision of making him the savior of your life. You have not surrendered your soul to him and you are still vulnerable. This is your opportunity. Kindly raise your hand if you are here and you have not given your, li your life to Jesus. You don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior. This is your opportunity today. In this family Sunday service, what an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. We are very careful to give you the opportunity. Do I have someone who wants to give their life to Jesus? Do I have someone? Look around church. Ask your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, do not enjoy the life in Jesus on your own and by yourself. Make sure we are all in his kingdom. I'm not seeing any hand. Let's give God a clear offering. Amen. Heavenly Father, what a moment of corporate worship we have. Lord, we thank you for giving Lord Apostle Ken the vision to start this ministry. For lives have been touched. Lives have been changed. Destinations have been pointed to the will of God. Lord, we thank you. We worship you, Lord. Lord, every family that is represented today, Lord, may we take this worship to home. May we take it into our life. Lord, we set up an altar that will not be defiled. An altar at home that will never be changed. An altar that will speak to generations to come. Lord, may you receive our worship today and usher in all generations after us into your unending presence. I pray for every family altar today, Almighty God. Our Lord, we raise them unto you. Lord, you are our God and we are your people. We are the clay in the hands of the porter. You are the porter, O oh Lord. Change our hearts, change our spirit, change our souls, O oh God. Transform us to be more like you each day. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, Lord. We give you honor, Lord. We give you glory. Take all the glory, Lord. Take all the glory, O oh God. Take all the glory, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes. Give God a clap.